number 70. Ninja Gaiden. When I think of Ninja Gaiden, the first thing that comes to mind is NES Hard. The notoriously difficult action platformer had many 80s kids throwing their controllers at their old zenith after just a few levels. You play as a katana-wielding ninja, Ryu, who journeys to America to avenge his father's death. Complementing Ryu's dragon sword are a number of secondary weapons that can be used to ward off the enemies, along with some sweet ninja skills like flipping and wall jumping. Aside from the awesome soundtrack, tight controls, and colorful graphics, what may stand out the most are the iconic cutscenes that flesh out the story. As a kid, I couldn't wait to beat the next boss so I could see what the next awesome cutscene would reveal. Ninja Gaiden had a solid fan base and spawned two sequels on the NES, and many other sequels would make their way onto future consoles. Sega! Sonic the Hedgehog I've actually talked about Sonic the Hedgehog quite a bit on my own video series, and I really like the game. It's, it's a really fun game to play. Sonic controls okay, but, you know, hey, that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. The graphics are great, the music is phenomenal, and it's just one of those experiences that you just kind of had to have growing up in the 90s. Sonic the Hedgehog's awesome. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the first Call of Duty game not set in World War II. This game was very popular for its multiplayer, but its single player is also quite interesting, bringing diversity to gameplay with levels focused on specific tasks like being an AC-130 gunship operator. The single player held its own, but I always prefer to play multiplayer games whenever possible. I really enjoyed the multiplayer of this game. I had a group of over 20 coworkers who would join my dedicated server and play various game types several nights a week. I met some of them only through this game and the many hours we spent as either friends or foes. This is the last Call of Duty game I personally purchased. Final Fantasy VIII Final Fantasy VIII is a special game for me, and it came out in a time when video games were still trying to figure out what 3D games were. And for that, I find that this game is particularly gorgeous in the visuals department, especially with the cinematics. At the same time, Final Fantasy VIII also boasts what I would consider to be one of the best end-to-end -end soundtracks in any Final Fantasy game. The combat system is unique and takes some interesting approaches to how you make your characters stronger. And for those who like to get lost in minigames, it boasts one of the best card games that you can find. If you're a fan of JRPGs and have yet to give Final Fantasy VIII a chance, I would encourage you to do so. It does take some chances in the story department that may come off as a little strange, or even introduce a few plot holes, but all in all, this game is one that is definitely worth your time. Final Fantasy IV Betrayal Love Redemption Sorrow Loss Hope and Joy These are the emotions you can expect to feel when you play Final Fantasy IV. The 16-bit JRPG from Squaresoft set the bar for all other RPGs to come on the Super Nintendo. The story follows Cecil, the captain of Baron's Red Wings and a Black Knight. He is joined by one of the best casts of characters ever to grace the video games. Kane, his best friend and a member of the Deadly Dragoons. Rosa, a white mage and Cecil's love interest. Rydia, a green-haired girl from the Village of Mist who just so happens to be this gamer's first ever video game crush. Palam and Porum, a pair of twin mages who make the magic happen, as well as many, many others. Whether it's inventing a new combat system with the active battle system, or giving us some of the best dialogue in gaming history, such as the famous line of You Spoony Bard, Final Fantasy IV isn't just one of the best games of all time, it's my personal favorite. Final Fantasy IV. What ordeal will you overcome to find your true self? Number 65. 
Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube. Luigi's Mansion is an excellent GameCube game with great graphics and fun gameplay. Playing as Luigi is a fun twist for a Nintendo game. Using your Poltergust 3000, a glorified vacuum, to catch all the ghosts, boos, and other enemies is a fun aspect of gameplay. Another great game feature is no loading times. When Luigi travels from room to room, you see him instantly open the door and walk in the room ready for gameplay. There is no load screen as he walks from one room or one area of the mansion to another. This game is on the easier and shorter side, which I definitely like. The final boss is proportionately harder than the rest of the game, but not impossible to finish. This is a quick, fun, fast, maybe one day to finish game that can be enjoyed by all. Blades of Steel, an ice hockey game by Konami on the NES. My cousin had an NES, so we used to play this at his place. Being able to play at the same time and get in fights really made this a unique experience. Twisted Metal 2. How do I explain the premise of Twisted Metal 2? Well, there's this guy named Calypso, who is essentially like a genie if the genie didn't have a lamp and was a fucking psychopath. He holds his own tournament called Twisted Metal. He invites lunatics from all over to compete in a tournament edition of Demolition Derby. One where the playing fields are heavily populated and everyone is armed. The winner of the Twisted Metal tournament gets one wish granted to them by Calypso. Anything they want. After last year's arena of Los Angeles was completely wiped off the map by Twisted Metal, Calypso has moved the tournament to include the entire goddamn planet. Fourteen new entrants entered Twisted Metal to get their wish granted, and God help the rest of us by the time they do. Twisted Metal 2 is a vehicular combat game on the original PlayStation that is considered by many to be the definitive title of the franchise. It improved upon the gameplay of the original and gave us more of what made the first Twisted Metal great. Lots of weapons, special attacks for each vehicle, other special attacks that could be pulled off with certain button combinations, and a few hidden secrets thrown in for good measure. Whether playing with a friend or experiencing each character's story in single player mode, Twisted Metal 2 gave us plenty of reasons to keep coming back for one more round. Halo 2 Halo 2 had a lot to live up to. First, it was the sequel to the original Halo, a blockbuster launch title which really helped establish Microsoft as a serious player in the console space. Second, it supported online multiplayer via Microsoft's Xbox Live service. While not the first shooter to do this, it was the first of the Halo games to do so. Needless to say, a lot was riding on Halo 2, and it did not disappoint. The single-player campaign continued the tale of the Master Chief from the first game, but also gave us our first inside look into the enemies of the Halo universe, the Covenant. Single-player, though, was but a taste of what Halo 2 had to offer. The real meat of the game came in the tremendous multiplayer offering. With an immense number of game options and a huge player base, it was always possible to jump into a quick match of online mayhem. Halo 2 turned me into an Xbox Live subscriber, and I spent hundreds of hours killing and being killed online. Playing Halo 2 online is one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever had. Number 61 Red Dead Redemption Never before has an open-world sandbox-style game appealed to me John so Marston. much. You play as outlaw John Marston in the Wild West. But whether you're riding the Vistas hunting wild game, playing poker in dirty saloons, or unlocking the deep, engaging story, you won't be disappointed with Red Dead Redemption. I first picked this game up when I bought a PS3, and it was one of the main reasons I fell in love with the console. It's fun, it's beautiful, it plays well, the controls are fantastic, and Rockstar did an amazing job. 
A lot of people compare this to Grand Theft Auto and all of the games in that franchise. And I have to say that for me, Red Dead Redemption is head and shoulders above anything else that they have ever done. Red Dead Redemption. Saddle up and ride into the sunset.